there's also um, sorry, there's also an opportunity to have that opportunity cost of what the equipment's there to do the big job to do this bit is a, is quite a saving. And if we decided in two years' time to mobilise for just an additional bit of work, any any feel for what that would be? What would the establishment cost be for an equipment? Um, the, well, the, 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 the biggest cost would probably be around procurement, um, project management. Um, the, the local contractors are on a very, a very handy, but it, it's a lot cheaper to mine a lot of rock and one go than to mine some and then yep. some again. So your savings is probably in the actual the, the mining of the rock. Yep. Potentially through the chair, this bit that we're looking at, if you just did like, like the pair, is about half the rock wall. So if you're saying that, that half is one million, then if the other half washed out, we took out the new bit because the risk is it's going to actually scour out behind the new bit, then you could be a couple of million to prepare the whole thing. Yeah. And also, we are piggybacking effectively on the project management and procurement costs, which are already covered. As well, okay. Cool. Any other councillor? I asked two requirements, please. Yeah. Um, page 33 at, at the top, cross goes over the price of the work and the tendered prices. So, that's where we're going to form the options presented to the council. Uh, they remain open until uh, the 29th of March. But once, once the resolution has been received from council, the technical delivery team. Further review the price and the tenderers submitted methodology and work plan. So at the moment, I'll be just talking to the uh, at Roscoe's at the moment. We'll have to do another. Just, just, just one direct source. Sorry, I'm going to say it's just about time to move. So it's, it's, it could, they could be referring to the three multiple options that I would imagine. Yeah, 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 that's okay. Yeah. yeah. And just one other question, which will actually come to the next one, but. Two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Uh, where's it coming from? It's not in the budget. Proposed budget, but we'll discuss that later. But this will raise it now that um, uh, I see a risk of two hundred fifty. Where it's coming from? So we've had discussed it before. Yeah. Might go to Douglas for that. Comment yeah. on where we would fund that. Ultimately, why why are we here is to get you to a place in which we have the funding source for the rhythm. We would. Do an external worrying, I doubt it will be popular with some internal worrying for us, and the brief is we'll be starting with the council either way on the three waters. So we probably just do something with internal worrying, making sure there's an appropriate charge and place for the payment based on the calculations of the So that's effectively the purpose of the paper is approving additional budget beyond what was contemplated previously. That's why it's here, otherwise, it would be already being done. I'll finish. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we are live and I uh, welcome Councillor Nalon. You have been with us for probably 10 minutes or so, but just note you're now online. Um, Thank you. Cool. Rightio, a good discussion around that. Any other? So we've got a recommendation there um, to resolve to approve. The recommendation is that we approve. Option one, which would require additional council funding of 250,000 excluding GST to supplement the 1,074,000 excluding GST received from uh, NEMA. Um, do I have a mover? Moved to Councillor Farlett, seconded uh, Councillor Webb. Any further discussion on that paper now? Okay, all those in favour? Any against? That's carried. Sorry, one against. That's carried. One against. Um, okay, that's carried. Thank you. Right. Everybody happy? Cool. Move to agenda item uh, six. Thank you very much for your questions, there, uh, Brendan. Very good. Very useful. Um, right. Annual plan. Who is talking to this one? Mr. Marshall, do you want to talk us through this? There's been some discussions at workshop level with councillors. So this is giving uh, effect, I understand, to some of the direction of travel that was indicated at those. 
Thank you, Richard. So the um, it's actually said we're altogether uh, and in pain. Uh, the key sort of key process we just want to now consider is uh, the information we we'll generate from the community. Uh, we've been obviously looking clearly at things like projects, community graphs, rates, examples, a uh, key part of that, and obviously a narrative. We've included a um, a document attached to this report, which will be a key consultation document. One of the important things if we decide though to uh, not consult this particular uh, pain engagement is that we will have the ability to, to tailor the type of discussions we want to have with the community and what we want to discuss with them. One about the plan that's proposed, and then secondly about the other item. Another key, key point here is relating to the issue of two wards targeted roads. As a, we all know that there's a challenging situation at the moment in New but obviously we've got more acute here in the wallet. So we are proposing that we would not lift our water targeted rates this year. We did, we did lift them last year, quite a bit, around about 10 and a half percent last year. So we're not exactly being sort of Simply time in terms of how we are trying to fund, but we are trying to find that uniqueness between increasing our general rates need and also trying to find out the rate which we're proposing the total rates of 6.8 percent. But I do need to stress 6.8 is a total in the district, there will be more than depending on the property valuation and highlighting also that you know, the evaluation process underway at the moment, so you need values. Will end up being available to be rated for 1 July 2023. But we have to go out to the property owners. So there will be some subtleties in terms of what that rate does for you. And finally, the other piece of work that we just need some guidance on. I think a key point just to remember the adoption of the annual plan, if we don't consult, it will be in actual June council meeting. Normally, you would have a draft and a plan and a final annual plan, but in this case, we're just having one annual plan. We just need a little bit of discussion about the uniform annual general charge. Currently, that's $500. It's been $500 since 2019 2020. Uh, it's been in that level probably for the last decade, from 2075 back in 2000 to 2012. And remembering then the fraction for the value, patient base, or the main value, for the top of the district, being picks up and balance. We obviously have a uh, quite detailed differential process we have to go through and how we do our yield calculations. So that's the secondary part. So some, some guidance as to what we would think that would should lead the program and we can find much our ranking examples for our engagement process. So happy to take any questions. Um, and just uh, anything else that might arise. So just to be clear, you're not looking us for us to set the UAGC today, it's just a Discussion that would guide the document you'd prepare for June. That's right. So just say hypothetically you decided 500 is fine. In our rate example, we put it out for engagement over the next uh, eight to ten weeks will be based on that 500. If you did have a view that maybe it wouldn't be 500 as a majority mention of council, then you need to give us that direction now. But at the end of the day, when we strike the end of the plan and then follow through with the rates resolutions, that is when the run out to the that would say, and then it's blocked off and you would be at that point. Mm -hmm. So I think the good thing is we can give people examples of what even we might be considering anyway. Okay, so let's maybe deal with the UAGC first, because I think that's a reasonably concise discussion to have before we perhaps dive into the some of the, the actual resolutions. So is there any any feeling discussion around UAGC, Councillor Howard? Um, I was quite surprised by the results and that it didn't really show what I expect to see. Um, on the average one, what it really does is it just brings down rural and commercial and what's the average reason to up. Um, what the figures don't really show us is that how it affects that spread of the rates from the average um, so look at the average doesn't really well, seems to increase as, as you're meeting the ones with higher land values in the average. So it doesn't really show us how it's expecting that spread. I, my thinking is that it's a bit more complex than just a simple move in the UAG, and maybe it is, does have to be part of the rates review. Maybe it has to be in line with differentials and 
and like the commercial and rural looking at those as well. So you a the uniform general charge. It's not as simple as just putting up the uniform general charge. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. So more in favour of keeping it status quo with the OGC at this stage. Yes, yeah. I think it's more than one factor. It's not an isolated factor. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. Any other direction on UAGC? Colin? Councillor Reedy, sorry. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I agree with uh, Councillor Howard. Uh, there's uh, we're talking about the race review coming up. Why, why are we change something now when we're actually looking at the full package later on? So I do fully agree that uh, this led to the status quo at the moment in terms of the uh, UAG. Mm -hmm. Cool. So we're talking status quo. Anyone got a different view on that? Maybe it might be the sweetest way to do this. Councillor Naylon, I know this is something that you've, uh, it's a, yep. bit of a, a bit of a pet topic. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, I guess the, the the concerns I have, and I've voiced them all along, is that you know we're talking about a six point something uh, percent rate increase, but when you go and look at um, you know the percentage increases with the five hundred dollar UAGC, um, you know you, you're talking three percent, one point nine, two point six for urban, but when you look at rural and commercial, you're looking twelve. 11.5, 10.9, 10.7, 11.5. And they come down, you know, not in dollar terms, not a lot, but quite considerably in, in the percentage terms, you know, that you're looking in the eights and not, you know, late eights and early nines sort of thing. So I guess it's just a, you know, a matter of sharing the burden, if you like, a bit more favorably. And, and um, that's why I always have this difficulty when we talk about the average rate increase um, not really reflected in, in the actual increases that people get. Whereas, um, you know, with, with the higher AG, uh, UAGC up to 550, um, you know, you, you're starting to get nearer that average increase for everybody. You know, yeah. some are down and some are coming up. So I think it's just it seems a fairer system that, um, you know, we're all shouldering the burden of the um, extra revenue required. Yes, Councillor Allen. So, so, that's, so that's a, a more of a, in favour of a 550, isn't it, uh, Councillor Allen? Yeah. yeah. Yep. Um, so noting the UAGC is just something that we do see every year, so it's not tinkering with rates policy per se, it's something that is set each year by, by council. Is that correct, Mr. Marshall? Yeah, I think um, Councillor Howard and Reed, you probably put their finger on it, that's probably getting the policy and behind why you set your rates and which we know we need to put. And so um, you, you may set your 500 at a different level, but actually it's certainly about that lower value to the rate philosophy behind that. Just as a might be useful, you know, you wish we just, just allow me a second in case this question comes up. If our 30% limit was taken, we could do a UAGC of $815. So we are well inside that statutory time frame, a uh, statutory limit, not that I'm suggesting you go anywhere near that, but just so you know, you can be saying what that calculation is. Does everybody understand what that means? So there's a limit around what we're allowed to collect via a UAGC? Which is thirty percent of the total rate take, I think. Excuse me, Mr. Mayor, I, I didn't quite catch that figure. What what was the limit? Sorry, uh, eight hundred and fifteen dollars. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Sampson. What is um, the rate? What percentage do we have at the moment? Twenty something, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And I agree that it needs to, if it goes up, it does spread because, you know, you just look at the rural and they're quite often the people that are getting the least um, benefit from the rates, whereas um, we're paying the biggest percentage by a long way. I think given this particular year, there's quite an upswing in what has been collected from the general rates. Uh, you know, the, the burden on the general rate take for some of the things we're having to spend money on. 
in my mind, does justify more of a UAGC lift because I think that is a bit more equal that everyone is just taking taking it as a flat rate to start, you know, on a slightly balancing that extra loading that happens to be falling on the general rate this year because it's things like the flood recovery funding and things that we can't avoid um, or are attached to any particular targeted rate account. Okay, any other questions? So I'd be in favour of 550 myself. I think I think it would be useful to nudge it a certain amount. But so it seems weird. So we got an extra fifty dollars. That's for all rate right players. Is that correct? So uh, at the moment we're looking, we're suggesting that there will be a uh, about a six point eight percent rate increase per month for the UAG at uh, at five hundred. How does that impact now? If, uh, there must be a, a, a drop in, in uh, expenditure in other areas in rate for uh, most areas that are all square. So, mm. are we still looking at six point eight percent of the increase by fifty dollars? What's so? What would the average rate rise look like? So it does not change the yeah. total general rate. All that happens is the amount you trapped on the uniform and you get charge less by that extra amount and your land value component is a dot total dollar value drops and then you change the fractions. So you do not collect any more general rates money. It's just how we split it between those two components. Okay, so we're quite again we're not having to make a decision today. I don't know if we're well, to back up, one, of the, one of the points I would make, and this is really a clarity to the community, if, if we're a bit unsure about where we want to sit, we would probably put out some examples of what we took me and just sit here and use that. It's obviously unpreferable with a tax situation like a rate, a rate is, that you do sort of back say, we're thinking this, but we thought that, that might be a kind of a mortgage way, but at least gives some clarity because we do want to put out some decision here like this. To say again, it doesn't change how much we're collecting, we don't have to change any budgets. It's just the split between mm. how we cover the general rates and cut is what we're talking about. Yeah. Um, okay, that's difficult. I'm not sure. Um, it's just a quick show of hands, um, just for not for decision making, but just to perhaps see if it, if it can frame um, finances teams. Um, how they might frame the papers that are coming through. So who would be in favour of, of a lift in the UAGC? Okay, and holding it as it is, it's only one. Okay, so I think we'd like to see a model preferring a lift. Um, and if, if um, it can be... Well, we gave us an example. So we've got 500, 525, and 550. Here you can go further, but maybe... 550 is probably a, a, maybe a bit of a middle round. I'd suggest the memory that general rate is moved by 10.8, I think it is. So 500 plus 50 is around about just on 10%. And maybe that's just a good, a good sort of low to compromise. Yep, around 550. Yep. That. Okay, thank you. Right, thank you. Right, now the rest of that paper, everyone happy with that? Just sort of just chunk it down a little bit. Okay, questions on the other recommendations there. Yeah, just let me get back to you. Yeah, goodness me. Uh, okay, let's. Um, any other general questions for the paper first? Councillor Reedy. A uh, number of questions, please, if I have, if I may, just for me. Uh, the title of the right name, I know that the workshop, a lot of these things were uh, discussed, right? So to see a gain of target rate, if we look at what we had uh, for the current financial year, it was we're expecting there's an increase of about hundred hundred thousand dollars. So I can't remember where or what was the driver behind that hundred thousand and an increase in the target rate. Target uh, rate for what? Uh, if we look to compare the what we're paying now for the target rate, seven three nine four. And the annual plan, proposed annual plan 2324, is saying 7499. These are the papers from uh, the workshop that we did. And I believe they're on this particular document yeah, as well. Okay. So, cool. Yeah, it's 
it's just checked through the um, sorry, uh, so there is a I think it's about two thirds of the levers growth that we base that we would have waste for rates. So it's same dollar value being levied, just the number of properties or connections paying and lifted, which gives them their income. I think there's a wee bit of a lift on one of the refuse um, rates being proposed, but that's why it's so small. It's just to hold things as tight as we can for this year. Just, a, just an increase in the number of paying. I'm sorry. You can have the turn of the year of delivery. I don't remember it being discussed about this uh, notion or sort of this idea going out year of delivery. How did that come about? This is the budget of the year of delivery. Yeah. As I say, which is one of the triggers of the game, so I don't recall it being discussed in the meeting, not being to. So, where does this phrase originally come from? I think it's to do with the, yeah. the double, almost triple infrastructure delivery that we're underway this financial year, this coming financial year. I think the fleet's a large, which is a large lift, and we're still a start recovery. Yeah. So it's a long way to the year, it's only 18 million in capital works money to do that. It's all coming out of other parties. If the year of delivery is not seen as an appropriate term, then that's fine, but this will be a big year. And I think when you came in, you made a pretty clear financial team that you pointed us to the one recovery program. And obviously, there's a lot of other matters to deal with across the organization, too. So, uh, mm -hmm. but if you think of the energy, I think you change it. Uh, 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 yep. In terms of that question, Mr. Mayor, I'm, uh, I'm comfortable. I just got cool. the clarification. Yep. The other one, though, uh, is what I could find as being a um, when we talked about targeted rates and you could have had a increase of 30 percent of a few of the circumstances. Uh, I think that's quite straight, it sounds like a soft story. The reality is we are not increasing the targeted rate for a particular reason. And it was discussed at the workshop that we had. What we now have in the end was an example of oh, we're, we're considering the impact of certain aspects on the rate payer and that. I don't believe we are. We decided that because of the three orders, the increase last year, all I'm saying is if we're going to be transparent to the to the uh, rate payer, be transparent. Please no soft stories. Uh, I've got the uh just just how can I just stop for a minute? Yeah. What, what what's a soft story? I think we've been very clear. Yeah. Now just wait, Mr. Eddie. I think we've been very clear yeah. that there's a massive risk to the council around investment into are you talking water water targeted rates and we've got two options one is that we do the work now and we build the rate pad or that we do the work now and we run up debt or we don't do the work so there's no hiding from that there's no resigning from that we've been very transparent around the challenge that's ahead of us um council is trying to minimize the risk the uh, impact on rate payers by considering and this is one of the matters that we'll be seeking feedback on is whether that's a wise idea or not to hold the water rates uh, to, to ease that burden on ratepayers. There's no lack of transparency around that. We've been very clear that we will be effectively burning some cash this year to hold water rates. That's been very clearly stated. If we if we approve the annual plan as, as mooted now. Unfortunately, there are also uh, the, um, the comments, the comments, the comments, so I'm going to withdraw that, uh, that comment. I cannot, I cannot locate the... Uh, the uh, page which it was on. Uh, so I, um, uh, as a whole, we're looking at six point eight percent. I raised the question uh, at the workshop about um, uh, a remuneration, staff remuneration, uh, an increase of four hundred thousand k, roughly around figures here, four hundred thousand k is included. Now, we're not responsible here, I'm very responsible for employing the chief executive. It's up to the, um, uh, as you know, the chief executive to employ the staff over that. Now, currently we have a, we do have an acting, uh, sorry, a deputy chief executive. The deputy chief executive role was brought about through, uh, through a flood and they require that extra resource at the time. As quite often happens around the world and in New Zealand, uh, that slowly morphs into a permanent position. Now, uh, whether or not a small 
uh, district like uh, like Bullock requires a deputy chief executive uh, is uh, is open to debate. Uh, I believe that of that four hundred thousand, uh, two hundred thousand should be taken out of the uh, out of the proposed uh, staff remuneration increase, and that if uh, a chief executive that comes in decides they want to have a deputy chief executive that comes out of the pool that has been agreed to by the uh, by um, uh, the state. It's two hundred thousand dollars at least if you come off that four hundred thousand dollars of uh, uh, staff remuneration. That will bring the the rate down from six point eight down to wherever it might be. Uh, we'll phrase that as a question to Douglas for Mr. Marshall. So the 400,000 uplift in REM, can you want to talk us through what that is? Yeah, I think um, Councillor, one, one of the costs is in there. If, if there's a concern about that, I would suggest don't phrase it about that particular issue, but the way you describe it could be out, and then you see you don't like see it. I, I would suggest a more pragmatic way would be to say we need you find an additional 200,000 savings. So that's a little bit more practical rather than just focusing on one particular issue. As we said in the workshops, we put forward the budgets that we believe we need to deliver the services that we sign up for in a long-term plan. Um, but you know, again, if we need to go further back and try and find those, then that's fine. But I suggest as well, fine, give us a lot of values and that help us with what services you might, you might change. One of the other areas you know, we identified with you was we are receiving more in that building and resource consent application area. We certainly think there needs some additional resource in there. Remembering also too that one of the flip sides of not getting your resource in those consents part of the time you can be done with a penalty ratio. That's happening with a number of councils at the moment. So you get much on saving money area, but then you actually cost yourself in another area. So it is actually supposed to keep the balance, but yeah, at this stage, if that's one of the ones you want to consider, still have time to consider that and do it as well in terms of all the extra strike from late position. Okay, cool. Any other questions? Councillor Reedy, you're done. Cool. Councillor Howard. I'd just like to comment that we have had this discussion as part of the workshop. We are going to be doing almost twice the, the usual expenditure that we normally do for a year. I think the movement and um, remuneration that will be a mere effect that we were taking on. Plus, we're also going to look at what the major movements have been, and um, I will be looking at trimming up it. Very realistic, and I might the staff for the work they take on. Yeah, thank you. Any other questions generally, not just about that particular matter? Councillor Sampson? Oh, are we discussing? whether we do the annual plan or we just go through with a um, a reduced type uh, because I want to support we, number A that we've got there for a couple of reasons. Um, we've just discussed $250,000 today for um, additional, for the rock work. Um, so, that's another 250,000 that ratepayers don't even know about that will be additional to what was proposed increases. Um, and when I look at the um, percentage increases in our rural areas, um, it's quite significant. And I feel that um, ratepayers should have the opportunity to be able to sort of have some input on that. And again, with the reserves contribution, normally um, allocation is done at an annual plan, in an annual plan process. So when would that be done? I just sort of feel that it's going to be such an ad hoc way of sort of making decisions rather than say, right, you know, this is where we are. I understand you'll put something, you know, in June and we make the decision. But are we just going to end up with additional um, papers like today with, oh, gosh, you know, there's 250000 that we haven't budgeted for, we need to bring it in. 
Whereas if we have the solid annual plan and people do have the opportunity to sort of say A or no, because a lot of the district might say, well, we don't want to support that um, rock group and we just repair what we've got. So it's just cutting out our communities and at the end of the day, we as um, councillors are here to represent our community and I just feel as though we're falling down a bit light on that by not putting the annual plan. Yeah, I hear what we've said before regarding um, our meetings and I don't go along with that because they've proven, proven to be fruitless, but I think we should have the documents that people can um, submit on. So just, I'll come to you in a minute, Councillor. So just a question, Seth, trying to pick a question out of that. Um, reserves contributions, how are they dealt with in this process? So the reserve contribution would still be dealt with in the same way as the eradication for this financial year would be through the annual plan process. And remembering that we're not saying there isn't an opportunity for community feedback. We're saying it is a feedback and engagement process, not the formal consultation process. One thing I would note, though, is that reserve contributions are not a discretionary grants pool, and that's how they have somewhat been treated in previous annual plan processes. So this would still give an opportunity for people to provide that feedback. Um, yeah, I think, I think for today, the use of reserve government contribution doesn't have an impact on rating rules. It is a reserve, that's how it is. So there's always an amount included in our budget for allocating. So I think the process, the timing might be slightly different, but the outcome is still the same. Um, but it doesn't have an impact on rates. And I might just comment on the issue about the rock wall. So the that was on the resolution that the annual impact is fifteen thousand dollars. It's not actually a major, major impact on the scheme things, and it's probably one of those items that you almost argue is core council business in terms of an activity we need to do, not really a discretionary one. If you've answered the right, asked the right questions during our resolution decision. So we going out to consult again might seem a bit harsh, but really it is pretty much a core activity, and the reason we're doing it is environmental protection. Hmm. Councillor Farrell, and um, then I'll come to you, Councillor Noble. My question is for the chair, Mr. Morrison. Do you think doing the formal consultation will capture the community's ideas better than the informal consultation? Uh, through the chair, yeah, definitely. It gives it's out there for the community to see, and they have the opportunity to consult if they so wish. But so, and at, at one time rather than ad hoc, because we've already had the Kawacheri trail come along and give us a, um, a presentation. And are we going to have different groups at different times coming along to say, oh gosh, look at me, yeah, we could, um, we're doing a project and we'd like to be considered somehow. And it's the ad hoc um, approach that I'm concerned about. Whereas if you do it, once um, and why I say ad hoc it's when one group come along somebody else may pick up and say well I should have done that too so I think do it once um, for everybody and they've got the opportunity and um, yeah correct me if I'm wrong but it doesn't sound like it's going to be an ad hoc process the document will be created by the council they'll put it out they'll ask for feedback and so it will be the same sort of process as the formal process that the police work behind the scenes. That's my impression. I I don't see it dragging on for a year and people making their same we need their fleas it's you know still following the same process but just in a different way. So I don't have this things. So there will still be documents produced with all the key elements in it um, that will go out to all the different community groups and to the resource centers and whatever. Um, it's not wildly different. Well, it's just not going to have that formal, must be on the submission form type thing, must be all turning up here to talk to us on a set day. It will be heard and, and absorbed into the final document that comes for us to ultimately approve. Cool. Right. Oh, sorry, Councillor Nalon, I did. Thanks, Mr.
I, I just wanted that clarification about what the process was, you know, with the consultation versus the engagement, the formal consultation that we've had, because, um, you know, well, well, I hear what Councillor Sampson's saying. I think that the way we've been consulting in the past has, you know, not been a very good way at all in terms of getting community engagement. So I'm all for community engagement, but we we just need to have, let everybody know right from the start what the process will be. Um, and I hear you say that there will be a paper, you know, a final paper that will come to us on a certain day, and in that paper will be all the. Um, rhetoric, et cetera, from the engagements. Uh, is that how it's going to work? Is, will it be ad hoc or, or is it, um, you know, by a certain day, et cetera, et cetera, all the engagement has to have taken place? And are we going to workshop it when it comes in before the final document? Okay, do you want to just talk through that process? Yeah, I can talk through that. Right. So to, to put it really simply, one way we could go about it is that the only difference the community would see between the process we ran last year and the process we're running this year is that last year there was one specific form that you had to fill in by a specific day. And if you wanted to talk, you had to come to a very formal hearing and that was your only opportunity. What we're talking about now is still getting the information out there, still giving the community the opportunity to feed back just taking away those really formal bits where you must use this form and you must show up in this very formalised hearing setting to try and make it more accessible for people and to try and get more people to engage because we have seen that historically large sections of the community don't engage. But absolutely, we still have to legally have adopted the annual plan by the 30th of June. So there still needs to be a paper come to the council table at the June meeting to adopt the final annual plan by which point all of that feedback needs to have been incorporated into the report recommending to council to adopt the annual, to adopt the annual plan either with or without changes. So there would be a date by which all feedback, regardless of what form it comes in, has to come in. There would also be that opportunity at the public forum for that meeting or if people were saying, hey, look, we do still want to come in and talk to council as a collective group, we may be able to organise another day where we do that. It just doesn't have that really formal strict structured setting which we believe is, is part of what's stopping a number of people engaging with the process. Does that answer, Does that that? answer your question, Councillor Layla? Uh, yeah, so just in terms of that final day, um, you're saying people can come and speak and we may have to allocate another day and then what happens after that in terms of decision making about all the engagement, you know, is it in or is it out? Is, is that a... Uh, similar to what we've done in the past in terms of, you know, we've had the hearings, if you like, and then we make the decisions on each of the submissions. Is that the sort of same sort of process you're envisaging? If I may, it, it wouldn't necessarily be that formally structured. Again, it would depend on the nature and the amount of the feedback that comes through, but certainly there is still that place for councillors to deliberate and debate on this is the feedback we received, do we or do we not make that change to the annual plan? Yeah. Again, it's just missing that very structured part, but it is still going to address all of that feedback that comes through. Okay, thank you. Okay, I think we need to keep moving. Um, so we've got some recommended um, recommendations there. Um, one, first one, A, direct staff to repair information for the community in relation to the 23-24 annual plan, including information on major projects and changes to rates. Uh, B, sorry, you'll move. You want to move A, seconded for A, seconded Councillor Sampson. Any further discussion on A? All those in favour? Any against? That's unanimous. Okay, recommendation B resolves it will not consult on the 23-24 annual plan on the basis that the proposed annual plan does not include significant or material differences from the content of the long-term plan for the 23-24 financial year. Uh, I shall, I'll move that way. Seconder. Seconded, Councillor Nalon. Any further discussion on that one? All those in favour? Any against? So the motion is carried with two against. Councillor Sampson, Gates. And one was just to be added and formally consult. I'd have been here, please. Okay, well, it's been moved and seconded and passed. Recommend uh, resolution C notes that there 
was a 12.1% increase in the various three water targeted rates last year. And given the current economic conditions facing the council and ratepayers, that the council wants to reduce the impact of the water activity cost increases on ratepayers in the 23-24 year. Year's not in there. And that the council will therefore hold rates at the same level as set in the 22-23 financial year for each drinking water supply and wastewater service. Can we just use the words last year, not 23, 23, not before, but then slightly informal last year and then that second is wrong? I see. So it seems in fact the 12 of months to increase the various three or tax rates in the 22, 23 financial year and given the rest of the size of the size the size of the size so with the insertion of in the 23 24 year and the 22 23 bigger part 22 23 year so we're referring to last year but this is essentially resolution to agree to hold the water rates at last year's water rate and wastewater rate levels is that a simple way of putting that that's everyone clear what we're doing there so, so yeah. should we not be saying current year same last year, but of course, last year was 22 23. Yeah, so that's a really good point. Why well, I think we should say 22 23 going to you. Yeah, so that's what the correction is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, with the insertion of 22 23 rather than using the word last year. Yeah. Councillor Basha, all happy? You're moving? Yeah. I move this, this uh, deputy mayor basically seconded to Councillor Webb. All those in favour of that? Yeah. No, I thought we were going to have some discussion first. So, oh, okay. You want discussion? Sorry. I was yeah. looking around the room. No one had indicated they wanted to. I do. Well, yeah, I'm in favour of it, but the figure is that that 12% increase, how's it going to be covered? Just by, you know, we're going to have. There is projected a 12.1% increase, and if we're not going to do that, that 12.1% extra in cost. So, so just to be clear, the 12.1 refers to that's what the increase was in the in the 20 last year 23 year. So it's noting so we've already bumped them. What it's trying to say, the report's trying to say is that we bumped them quite a bit last year. So it's not like we've been ignorant to the need to. Right. Okay, right. Yeah, I misunderstood right. because I was thinking that's what the increase, and we're going to hold them. So we'll cut back services, or are we saying are we're funding it from cash? I think the report's yeah, it's, it's made it for you on page one hundred and nineteen. Last sentence I've said options for recovering the costs that will not be funded to the twenty three twenty four financial year will need to be considered in future years. So it is. It is. In simple terms, we are using our cash uh, working capital, closed account as the terminology for our target rates, to hold that. Um, and then we will be recovered. Either it can be recovered, we recovered through future rates or future charges under the water structure option to come out. I mean, I would just like to highlight this this is not unusual to smooth your year's rates. We've been doing this for a long time, we're not unusual to cancel to do this type of thing. There are a number of councils of signal this type of approach due to the conditions this year. Yeah. yeah, I'm in favour of that, but I just don't want if things don't move with three waters is the way we would like is yeah. that it's not one big thump the following year. So and how long do you keep smoothing with it a sort of gradual increase with the residual? So that is. So I can perhaps wrap that up and say that is the risk with this approach, but it will be decisions of subsequent councils whether or not that risk, that bump oh, yeah. is, is realised in one go or whether there's continual gradual uplift or what would be subsequent resolutions of council. But we don't want anyone in the room to be under any illusion that holding the rates is coming for free. It is coming at... That, that's what I'm sort of trying to make. It's just a gift. Yeah. Councillor Reid. I voted against this particular one simply because uh, we're talking about given the current economic conditions based on the council and rate payers, the council wants to reduce the impact of water activity costs on the rate payers in 2023 When we get the uh, uh, workshop 
uh, when we talked about uh, holding the target rate for, for water, it was more as a result of the unknown fact of being uh, three waters. If my memory serves me correct. Uh, now we're saying oh, we'd, we'd, we'd like to increase the uh, uh, or, or reduce the, uh, the impact on the rate payer. It sounds nice, this is what I talked about before. But the real reason why we're doing this is because of the uh, unknown factor regarding the three waters there. And so on, so on, from what I want to say. So, take a look at Tim Quidvice on that comment. That, that is sort of one thing that's been talked about in the industry, but that we said to us, you need to be a bit more focused on what is the position of the rate right base. Yes, that is a pretty common thing about three waters, but what we're really saying is that we're hearing the sound of the hearing, hearing the statement say we need to hold the cost that you can. It's really hard for us to pull back our costs as a business that we can hold our rates under the pricing. So focus has to be on the pricing, the bank and not on other factors. That might be valid, but in this case here, we need to focus on what's in front of us. And that's our rating structure view for water rates going into the next country. I apologize, that's is a little bit different than what we talked about, but we need to just focus on that particular issue as the technical discussions we've had um, the path around the region still. Because we simply don't know. There's political uncertainty, there's no doubt about that. I think yeah. that's really but but the but councillor e, the, the, it is literally a discussion a, a vote as to whether you want to see the water rates go up next year or, or hold them as what's suggested by this resolution. So that's that's really what you're voting for here. To increase rates to the ratepayers or hold rates to the ratepayers. No, it's not really, uh, I agree with that question. Well, that's no, the effect of this, that's the effect of this resolution. We're either if we don't vote to hold rates at current levels, then we'll be putting them up. That's what we're asking councillors to decide. That is what the resolution is genuine, is literally about. Well, include how we want it to be included in the annual plan. Yeah. I mean, that is what the outcome of that resolution is. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I just disagree with the uh, wording. Yeah. So the reason is, is up to debate, I guess, but with the effect of not supporting that resolution yeah, will be a, a rate rise for next year. Okay, yeah. yeah. Councillor Nalon, you had your hand up, I think. Uh, yeah, I'm just presuming, uh, Mr Mayor, that if we uh, go out with this public engagement and people say, well, we do want the water rates and the sewage rates to go up, then we'll do it then. Yeah, exactly. This is a consultation. It's just to try and provide some direction to... Yep. Start how to prepare the documents. Cool. So everyone clear what that all is now. So that's been moved, seconded. So all those in favour of C as written. Any against? That's unanimous. Thank you. Good discussion. How are we going? Does anyone need a break? No, Should go a wee bit longer. Um, that was a that was a what is it? You didn't even pause. Yeah. <laughs> Gender item seven is property rationalisation. Um, gosh, she's talking to this. None of these people are in the room. Okay. Let's do the paper is read. Yeah, it's read. It's um, so we're taking questions. Okay, let's go for questions on this. Gender item seven. Page one, two, one. Councillor Reedy. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, item number two, or, um, uh, recommendation instructs the Chief Executive Officer to proceed. To proceed, should that not be acting CEO? Uh, yep, arguably. Yes. Sorry, 2.1, I should say. Yep. Um, the 3.1 uh, background colour coding. Uh, number 3.1, we've got red, green, and yellow. I'm just not sure what the, um, there's no um, uh, indications of what the color coding means. Can someone enlighten me on that, please? Um, Torrin, I would say red means progress is not progressing, green means it's progressing well, and white means it's already sold. <laughs> Orange means still some reasonable work to do before it can progress, but not a red flag at this stage. So we don't really know. 
But I think the strategy system has been used as described by the CEO a number of times. We should have included it as a key in the report, but as she described it. So, um, just a comment on the chief executive. I mean, we're going to make a decision, I think, later today or this week. So, really, we don't think you're acting, but we just there's some agents that should be the chief executive description is fine. And this is my last one from that page. That's 4.8 on page 127. 4.8. Um, um, and a consultant has been engaged to work alongside council staff. Staff have got managed from all the logistics budgets. The consultant's fees are also managed from the logistics budgets. So I, I just don't understand where uh, that consultant cost comes from. but. Obviously, I'm taking one of the consultant leaves and I want to come in, and the costs are neutral. That would be a way of being ready there. Yeah, I mean, that would be a way. I mean, sometimes in these situations, you actually, the, the cost of disposal would be a valid charge and cover from the proceeds anyway from the property. So, um, in terms of the budget being available, I think either way is probably acceptable. I just don't have to know if I can tell what the budget is. If it's outside of the central from the consultant, any other questions on this paper? Councillor Naylor? Yes, Mr Mayor, not so much a question, but um, when I was a young and very nice councillor, I, I learned a very important lesson about the power of the people when it came to our proposal to sell part of Percy's Bush. And I'm just wondering if, um, you know, when this one does come up, that there will be sort of some public notice on it, because I know it created a lot of public interest the last time we tried to do this. May I, through, yeah. through the chair? Yeah, uh, Thank you, Councillor Nail, and it would be fair to say that, that current staff have found the lessons of history on the file with regards to that uh, particular piece of land, uh, and we do intend to learn from that, so yes, is the short answer. Okay, thank you. I'll move the recommendations. Okay, so I'll come to you, Councillor. We've got to move. I'll just let me make sure I'm on the right thing here. Okay, so Graham's moved, Councillor Weston. Um, yeah, just a, thanks, Mr. Um, yeah, just a question about uh, 7 Aiken Street and one on the right. And um, if that could be sold as 7 Aiken Street, I understand that there's no full road yet. Would they have access to the boundaries? I we wouldn't have to hand, but that's the sort of thing that the legal review and technical follow up is, is checking. Yeah. So, so the legal agree. advice, yeah. yeah. Okay, so moved, uh, nail on. Any seconded for that? Seconded, Councillor Howard. Any further questions, discussion? Okay, I will maybe read it out for the benefit of the public. Oh, gosh, it's a lot, isn't it? Um, instructs the chief, the chief executive officer to proceed with the process of disposal of the following council owned properties as set out in appendix one, subject to legal advice. A Boswell Street, Denston, lot 2 DP, 1987, record of title NL 68279. Uh, B Gillies Street, North Deniston, part section 90 TN of Deniston, record of title NL 20 89. Do I need to do this? C. Because we don't need to read the complete references. Okay, it's a corner of Gillies and Boswell Streets, Deniston. D, Gillies Street, South Deniston. And E, 7 Aiken Street, Waimangaroa. And two notes the progress made on the disposal of properties which have been already approved by Council for disposal. So moved Councillor Nail on, seconded Councillor Howard. I'll put it to the vote. All those in favour? Any against? That's carried unanimously. Thank you. Okay, and this is my report. Um, so this is just to, are you okay? Oh, sorry, sorry. Agenda yes. item eight. Mm -hmm. um, so this is to formally receive the uh, resignation uh, of Rachel Turner from her role as her role at BDC, and that is coming to us because she's currently fulfilling the acting to executive role, so it is technically an employee of this table. Um, I think the report's self explanatory, but I'm happy to take any questions if there are any. Councillor Reddy. Yeah, 
very simple, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. The um, uh, 2.1 percent resignation from her role in the Mr. Council, effective from the 9th of June. Uh, well, after the BBC blog that came out, uh, said 24 May, uh, difference, of, difference there. And then we'll look at uh, 12 months' notice uh, from the 9th of the 3rd, which is the date of the, I see the letter, from the 9th of the, 9th of the 3rd. It comes to uh, 12 weeks notice, becomes the first or the second of June. So we've got three different dates basically, and um, not material, but I just want to know which data we're looking at. So one of them I can answer, the other one I'm not so sure. So the 9th of June was the calculation from David receipt of the letter, I understood. Um, the other one is um, Rachel had previously applied for some um, long service leave, yeah. which has been granted. So her physical exit from the building, I understand, will be 24th of May, um, but her technical finish of employee will be the 9th of June. I'm not sure about the other June date. Do you... If I could could answer that, when I wrote the letter, I understood my notice period to be three months. When I went back and double-checked the contract, it was 12 weeks yeah. from nine March to nine June. Yeah. That's technically yeah. 13 yeah. weeks, so I've, I've given you an extra week. <laughs> I, I, I just want a clarification on my no, yeah. yeah. so, so do we need to change the res resolution or is it immaterial? Uh, uh, immaterial as long as uh, yeah. it does an uh, agreement. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Um, I guess I'll just let yeah, long note. It's already been said publicly, but the um, you know, obviously it's recognition of um, a long-term service to council and um, Obviously, you've got quite a role to play and hand over to our new permanent CE once appointed. And um, yeah, just appreciate the effort you've made and um, and um, enjoyed working with you all these years. I think the rest has been said publicly in the media. Anyone else has anything they wish to add? That's just right. to reinforce that, and um, really appreciate the advice and, um, that you've given us. Time I've been on council, and times I've sat there in the background, the, you know, the information you've provided us, your knowledge around policy and everything. But I'm, I'm sure you, you'll still be available to give us some help in the future, and I uh, wish you well in your new role. Cool. Can I just say something to your business for you? Well, I just, uh, I just like to say thank you. Uh, I know I would not always have been doing it. You know, I'm very pleased that you are taking the opportunity to write a new book of people by, um, I'm, I'm not saying you know, all by exiting the BBC, but in a good way, uh, but then being able to network with another group of uh, people, either virtually or if you're making with us for the uh, it's fine. Uh, so be it. So it's just that widening of the uh, for the actors like yourself. Uh, to do that networking top stuff. So thank you. Thank you. <laughs> right, I'm happy to move both one and two. I think Deputy Nebasha would probably be the most appropriate second it. Is there any other discussion? All those in favour? Oh, yep, noted. Okay, all those in favour? Any against? That one's carried. Thank you. And thank you. What have we just not search? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Rip it up. <laughs> um, right. Here we have a agenda item nine, reserve and hall subcommittee report. Now, this is to just tidy up a few appointments that have come to light for a couple of our reserve and hall subcommittees, um, and to tidy up um, some representation in the. Um, and I'm a Hill Award um, for the Maruya Hall Subcommittee. Oh, yes, and we note there is a, an incorrect name in the uh, Makanui uh, Reserve Subcommittee. It's not Faye Spillane, it is Barbara, Barbara Spillane. So, any questions on that? Councillor Reid. 3.2, if I may, please, Mr. Mayor, moving forward. Uh, oh, let me see. Oh, 
first formal meetings of the subcommittees have begun. Now, back in uh, December, we had a, a very strong discussion regarding, I believe, a presentation from from Jackie mm -hmm. uh, Nockenwood. Now, at the moment, uh, at the, as it stands at the moment, my understanding is the lowest in pink. Uh, the Mock of War Reserves and Board Committee, subcommittee, is only interim. They have not agreed until such time that, that the terms of reference uh, have uh, been agreed upon. Now, in this paper here, we're saying, third uh, point two, the first formal meetings for the subcommittees have begun. Yeah, it was. Uh, so they haven't had theirs. Sorry? They haven't had theirs. They haven't had these, but they're not a subcommittee at the moment, though. They're well, they're also not paper. mentioned in the paper. Sorry? They're also not mentioned in this paper, I don't think. Well, okay, then. All right, I'll, I'll take that point. Yeah. But they haven't had these, but a number of subcommittees have had them. So the meet, so the statement that formal first meetings for subcommittees have begun is accurate. Okay. Yeah. That's, a, that's okay. Yep. Anything further? Councillor Weston? Okay. Yeah, um, yeah, just... Um, draft recommendation number three, it should be active chief executive. Or chief executive. I know it's just a form. Uh, They're interchangeable, to be fair. Correct. But we so could I uh, move all three? Yeah, I'll just put a hand up with oh. Mr. Councillor Nalon. Yes, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Um, just by way of explanation, um, in terms of two and three, the um, Springs Junction Reserve Committee and the Maruria Hall Committee combined um, during my during the last sometime during the last three years. Prior to that, they worked um, as separate entities, and I guess um, you know bringing the whole valley together is, is the aim of this um, joint committee. And there was some um, miscommunication, I would say, in terms of the advertising of expressions of interest. And so that's the reason why we're, we're um, starting a new process. And, and I think that um, at the meeting that we had, we had um, those people that have been um, appointed, uh, plus a whole lot of other people from the community, and we got pretty well unanimous agreement that we should start the process again. So I think that we should endorse that recommendation. In terms of two, we're, um, we're looking for um, myself to replace uh, Linda Webb I've just had a, quite a bit of um, history with those two groups. And, um, you know, while we bid in this um, joint committee, I think it would be appropriate that, um, that, that I took over from that, uh, took over on that subcommittee. Thanks, Councillor Nail. I certainly have, uh, I'm certainly happy to take, uh, take the um, advice of the, of the ward councillors on that. Clearly they're the best connected to those communities to know uh, recommend on those. So this uh, moved uh, one, two, and three have been moved. Councillor uh, Webb. Is there a seconder? Councillor Farlett. Any further discussion on those changes? Um, so that's appointing uh, Andrew Wiseman to the Wamangaroa Reserve and Hall Subcommittee and appointing to the Mokanui Reserve Hall Subcommittee Barbara Spillane, Silas Coleman, Kim Cameron, and Hayley Brunner. Two appoints Graham Malon as the elected member to the Springs Junction Reserve Maria Hall subcommittee in place of Councillor Linda Webb. And three instructs the Chief Executive to advertise for applicants to be considered for appointment as members of the Springs Junction Reserve Maria Hall subcommittee. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favour? Any against? Carried unanimously. Thank you. Um, have we got someone waiting online? Do we, do we want to? Deal with the well being now. Are they waiting to talk to us? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Shall we do that? Yeah. Okay, we'll do it. Agenda okay. item 10 is council remuneration. Um, this is a proposed change to include room for chairperson of the Nanga Hua Community Board within the council remuneration pool. Um, So but just principally <laughs> seats. <laughs> is there any discussion on Councillor Naylor? Yes. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. I think this has been an anomaly that we should have addressed quite probably quite some years ago. And and I think um, you know it's pretty straightforward set out in the paper. And so I would be happy to move all the draft recommendations. Okay. 
Second. Okay. Moved and seconded. The change is there. Is there any discussion on those? We'll go to Councillor Farlock first. Is there a way of changing this in the future so that each council doesn't have to do this? Yeah, do this every time? Yeah, short, answer probably no. <laughs> short answer is yes, it is. It would get picked up when the remuneration original decision is made. So now we have an understanding that this issue exists. We can document that in the processes for each time but, the new council sets up. Right. But in saying that, yes and no, because if the yeah. reserve, if the sorry, an Angular Community Board resolved to vote a community member as their chair, we wouldn't have this issue. So there wouldn't be a there wouldn't be a role to fund out of out of councillor rem. Um, it is only, and we don't necessarily know that when we resolve this. So there's always the potential for a tweak. I don't think it's a huge deal, but it does it does potentially create a slightly difficult conversation for people. Um, Councillor Reddy was next, and then I'll come back to you, Councillor Webb. Oh, can Councillor Webb go first in place? If you like. Okay. Yeah. I just suggest that um, the reason why it came about because the community board didn't have their first meeting until December, so I'd suggest after the next election that the community board meeting was sooner after the election results instead of waiting for the December so then therefore they can get sworn in but we all did but then have their meeting and then you would know who the chairperson is mm -hmm. instead of two months after because what happened this time around we resolved at I think was it the October or November we did the remuneration for council and then I wasn't elected till December so it didn't become apparent I just assumed yeah, what the remuneration was. So yeah, I think if we can make a note for next time, yeah, that we have an earlier ICB meeting, so then you'd know who the chair was. Councillor no one hand. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, the old alternative um, is that you know, in the remuneration, we do make allowances for it, and then if a community member, community board member, does become chair after that well, then the situation would be reversed and people would be getting a little bit more money rather than a little bit less money. Unfortunately, we can't do that. The, the requirement of REM authority is that the, we have to put forward a proposal that fully spends the councillor REM when we put in our, our initial cut. Yeah, so, that's what I mean. But if you allowed for the fact that a councillor would probably end up chairperson of the ICB in your proposal, and then if that didn't happen, you could revisit it at a later date, just like we are doing now, except it would be the reverse. You would be adding to the remuneration of everybody, not subtracting. I'm getting a lot of head shaking from finance. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, although just another reiteration of the spreadsheet, uh, I think Councillor Webb's comment is the correct one, which is we get clarification on that issue. Member we're sprinting this through pretty quickly with this bit of a recurrent, but we could have had a bit more time to resolve that issue, done it, so there would be no reason to say. Yeah, it's just because I mean, it is, again, another job to do if you do it in two parts, which is confusing for all of you because you're ready to adjust it. Yeah. Okay. Now yeah, you can't read. Yeah, sorry, Mr. Mayor. Uh, as you know, uh, you're Mr. Mayor and Rachel, I wrote a paper and an email to both of you and stated that there's a state of clarity. I'm not opposed to having my existing remuneration with you. Uh, the, the, the only question I've got, a couple of questions, is council staff also sought clarification on the process. So what, what clarification was uh, received from, I'm assuming, the ring authority? Yeah, so thank you, if you wish it. The specific question I, I just had, it was really good email exchange. I just wanted to make sure that it wasn't the total 7,000 roughly, that we can make available, or was it the difference? And, and the Ramadari said, no, no, the difference is the issue under Section 5, or so the determination. Because that to me, just in looking at the stuff that I looked at this, I'm not sure so clear on this. So that was the clarification. So, then, I mean, there was lots of red flags, lots of stuff, but we've got to read every bit of the determination, which is not what I'm about. Can see. If I might add to that, there was also, uh, as we 
had discussed previously, we sought clarification on that issue of if we were not spending all of the ICB remuneration pool, yes. could we take the, the $3,000 saving and apply it to the councillor pool? And the answer was a very definitive no, we could not. So what's before you is the only option to remunerate the CE. It must come out of the elected member pool of this council. So we all clear? Uh, Last one. Just says, yeah, it is such, uh, and once again, I'm not against, okay, uh, it is such remuneration for additional responsibility must come from the council's government's remuneration of all. But uh, going back to what we were saying before, uh, Rachel, about the, the 7,000 versus the 3,000, i.e., the almost double. Uh, my understanding was additional levels of responsibility can be recognised only for the board as a whole and not for individual members. Each proposal will be considered on a case by case basis. So I take it there's going to be a bank put forward to the remuneration authority. Correct. By the 30th of the oh, Friday. Probably tonight. Tonight. <laughs> so, so, not to uh, heart. Yeah. so we've got what like, haste to get it, get it done by uh, by March, in which case, sorry, in March, in which case there'll be a, I believe, a, a, uh, a back pay coming to the water. Um, no, no. Um, yeah, it's only if it's uh, for the first of July. Can, can yeah. we just leave it to the reiteration of the side then? Just, sorry, just, just we don't know. So, so we don't back pay and stuff from now. Or, all right, so so you you're happy to go? Sorry, Mr. Beth, for you. Uh, you are you happy to go for the thirtieth of the thirty first of March or whatever? Oh, thank you. Sorry to catch you. Yeah. So you'll uh, be going through. I'll be the important skip this first person to the doctor. Yeah. So we get through the agenda and I can go and get our paper out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Moved and seconded. All those in favour? Any against? Motion is carried unanimously. Thank you. Um, I don't think this is going to take a lot of time. Here we break. Put my spot. Yeah. Okay. Um, we get to can I propose a, a um, 10 minute adjournment, please? Yeah. I'll run for